Okay, so I just finished rewatching the Macross Frontier TV series. Now, I'm gonna preface this with two important points. One, the TV series is no longer the canon. The movies are the canon. This is supported by all of the events of Macross Delta. Um, uh, and the fact that they, um, and also, uh, what is it, the, uh, the, the little short movie that was with the Delta, the second Delta movie, um, that, um, that's directly connected to the ending of the second movie, so the TV series is not really canon, um, only small events and the protoculture lore are really there, like the episode Legend of Zero, um, is canon because it doesn't, um, uh, it just explains more of, of uh, Cheryl and, well, of Nanka's shoot to fame, basically, and doesn't conflict with anything in the movies. Um, now, this review is going to be a little bit different because, um, because of this fact, because the movies were written differently, the events are changed quite a bit, um, the TV series being decanonized, um, uh, really only, um, the, the only things to really explain are the protoculture lore to this, <clears throat> and the, the history of the Bajra, and, but I will say this, rewatching it, it didn't feel as bad as when I originally watched it. And I've watched it a few times over the years, but I haven't watched it for a few years now. In general, from the TV series point of, from TV series only, um, the there's more interaction with the. Uh, operators on the Macross Quarter, which is something that I complained about a lot with Delta, is that they didn't have that. Um, it was closer to something more like the original Macross, where they actually had more... Well, actually, even Seven had a lot of stuff with uh, Sally and uh, Miho Miho, but... Um, but um, that was something that was really good. The... A lot of the the extra story with Kram was really good. Um, Michelle dying was really good, um, which is another reason why the TV series is in canon because he's alive. Um, after uh, the second movie, and Aruto is missing because he disappeared with the Bajara Queen. Whereas the ending of this, um, Aruto is with everybody and alive on on the Bajara homeworld. So th there's a whole lot here to um, to uh, um, to ignore, um, but for the lore side of it, there was um, the most important thing that you need to know out of Macross Frontier TV series in terms of the lore is a a line. In I think it's the last episode, uh, episode twenty-five. Um, that Grace says I think it, maybe maybe it might be twenty-four, um, but one of the two. That um, when she kind of hooks herself up to the Bajara Queen, um, she says, "We finally." Um, uh, become greater than um, protoculture and there's some scenes there where it shows a lot of stuff from Macra Zero in terms of Tori no Hito and one of the things is one of the words that she uses um, akogareru which is um, when she's talking about this particular thing is that and and why the scene is so important is um, that the protoculture encountered the Bajra when they were still alive and the um, they saw how the Bajra could communicate the way they communicated how they could you know fold on their own um, they were um, 
the 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 protoculture really wanted to learn from um, the Bajarabala things to send their race into the next level of um, uh, uh, what is it evolution. But the one thing that they couldn't do is they couldn't manufacture the fold quartzes, which is something that Bajra do naturally. It's inside their body, um, which is why they wanted to. Um, and this is more. Um, this is explained a little bit in the movie. They want to use the fold quartzes to um, uh, make weapons to stop the Bajra and all these other things. And actually, they do make weapons in the TV series for that specific perfect purpose, but it's a little bit different. Um, the um, the protoculture, the what this particular scene though is going at is that the protoculture encountered the Bajra, and they wanted to evolve to that next level of evolution that would include that part of Bajra where they can communicate over fold space without you know like having to to send messages or something they could just do it through a a fold network within them right but they couldn't do it without the fold quartzes well that's they what they learned from the Bajra was how to create um things that could, you know, uh, like, they could float and they could go against gravity on their own. So what they did is, um, that's how they made the Torinoshito from Macra Zero. And, of course, I mentioned in my Zero review how the Torinoshito is actually, you know, like, a guardian to see if humanity has gone into space yet or not, and if they're still fighting or not. And if there's a, a no to either one of those questions... They are the Torinoshitos to completely destroy humanity and they're supposed to restart. So, what is the Torinoshito? It is a, a living weapon that um, the protoculture created based on the Bajra Queen. They saw... Um, so when they left it on the earth, they broke it in two or whatever. But um, uh, the um, uh, the whole purpose, the the whole design and everything that protoculture did for that was based on the Bajra Queen because they had encountered the Bajra when they were still alive. So this is where Zero becomes very important. The the some of the little side stories of the TV series are. are um, are interesting, but keeping in mind that um, this isn't the canon of Macross Frontier, um, it it changes your perspective. It's like um, another understanding of the the Frontier timeline, but because of the movies changing the events so much, the Durandal Valkyrie appearing in the movies, but not in the TV series. And the Durandal is is what Max uses in the second Delta movie. The um, uh, the short movie that's with the second Delta movie, that's with Duncan and Michelle's alive, um, uh, and the opening scene is Duncan's concert where she's singing the song Hoshkira, which is the last song at the end of the second movie. On top of that, the visual that she has when she's singing the song is of the, the crashed Durandal on the Bajra homeworld. So, um, the, the entire canon is based on the movies, except for the lore where you can gather the information from, from, from the TV series. But it's not enough. And this is where, unlike Delta, which I've reviewed, um, the Delta TV series, in order to really get an understanding of the characters and all these other things, you have to watch the TV series to really get the idea of everything. Whereas with Frontier, outside of the few little protoculture things and the things that deal with, um, with Malnome and, um, stuff like that, um, uh, <clears throat> 
the, it's basically a mute point. So, um, so, uh, also because the concert hall that Nanka has her first concert at in the movies is different. It's at the Atlantis Dome, which is a, a throwback. It's an homage to Macross Plus. Um, so if anybody knows your Macross Plus lore, you should know that. Um, uh, what else? Um, the, the concert where Cheryl has her first concert on um, uh, Island One in the Frontier Battle Group. Um, that's also a completely different um, uh, arena that she plays at. So, you know, there, there's so much that the, the movies change that you can't, like, watching the Macross Frontier TV series outside of the lore on, like, the, the backstory on Galia 4 and Donka's backstory about that and what the song Imo is and um, the, the fact that the protoculture based... Um, the Tony Oshito off of the Bajra Queen and all that stuff. The, other than that, it's like not even in, in the episode Legend of Zero. That's like basically it. O outside of that, it's all completely different. So, you know, if you want to watch the TV series, do it. But just keep in mind that it is not the canon of the Frontier Universe because there's just too much that changed. Um, ignore the FB7. Because FB7 is a, a cannon breaker. Um, and the reason why is that Aruto is missing, but Cheryl is awake. Now, if you watch the second movie, um, which I'll go into a review of that another time, the um, uh, Aruto disappears and Cheryl is in a coma. So, and she's still in a coma in the Delta short, or in the, the Frontier short flick. That was with the second Delta movie, so that sh that little mini like thirty minute or whatever it is uh, with uh, Ozma meeting uh, uh, the Proto Devlin about um, about Fire Bomber and stuff. That is a complete non-canon thing because it, it it's a canon breaker because you can't have Cheryl awake and Auditor missing. Um, it's impossible. <coughs> so. If you want to watch that, um, just keep in mind it's kind of like a fake side story kind of thing that you can ignore. Um, but kind of like the Frontier TV series. Um, so this is the one TV series that you can completely ignore for the most part. Unless you really want to know like some of the characters in more detail. Um, which is fine, but... Um, but the the movies really you know changed so much about it. And one other thing I forgot to mention is, in the one of the final scenes of the the final episode of the TV series, Aikun is still with Nanka on the Bajara homeworld. This isn't this doesn't happen because all the Bajara go off to a different realm after the end of the second movie, and nobody knows where they're at. So. Um, that's why um, uh, that another thing that, that is changed by the movies being canon. So Frontier is the one that you can skip the TV series entirely and not have to worry about it. So, um, uh, so with Frontier, watch the movies and then you can watch the TV series after that if you want to, you know hear the, the deeper protoculture lore, you want to know what happened on Gallia 4 in more detail. Uh, Gallia 4 being the planet where um, Nanka singing Aimo and the Bajra come and then basically uh, uh, her family gets wiped out supposedly, although there's no evidence of Nanka's mother dying. Um, so you can't really say that. And there's no evidence that Malonon died either, so um, nobody knows what happened. So. They just know that the Bajra attacked. Danka lost her memories. The only memory she has is the song Aimo. And Brera becomes um, a cyborg because of it. And Grace becomes a cyborg of it because of it too. But, but other than that, um, almost everything is... The, the entire setting is different. And so um, I, I'm not going to, you know 
poop on the, the TV series. The, the deep lore is really important, but, you know, since it's decanonized because of the movies, uh, they, it makes it less fun to watch. Like, the entire time I'm sitting and watching it, like, well, that's not canon. That's not canon. How? Well, can this fit into the canon? Well, maybe not because of this thing and this thing and uh, so yeah. Um, that that's basically what the Frontier TV series series is. So, um, I I don't hate it as much as I did back in the day. Now that I understand the the pro the importance of the protoculture lore that's within the TV series. But mm, is it worth watching? Mm, I don't know. I, I will leave that up to other people to decide. But just keep in mind that there's too much canon changing stuff in the movies. And so that'll definitely change your view of the TV series. Um, like... And, and I, I watched the TV series as it was on, like, being aired on TV. I would stay up really late to watch it, so... Um, because there hadn't been a Macross series in, what, at that point, what, 13 years or something like that since Macross 7? So, um, that, I, I was excited for it at first, but I, I was really, you know, kind of, uh disappointed in it as well now i don't know how i feel about it really i don't hate it as much as i did but mm, is it worth watching for the lore yeah maybe one watch to and pay very close attention to certain events the episode legend of zero the episode where or the episode or two where they're on galia 4 where they go inside the sdf4 global um, uh, and, and you kind of get into, to, this is what happened to, um, the, the battle fleet that Nanka's family was on, <clears throat> but the events are kind of, the events that happen in that episode really aren't canon, <laughs> um, but the, the details of the past events are, are, you could, I, you could wiggle them into the canon somehow. Um, and the final, what, like five episodes, um, where they talk about, um, all the stuff with, uh, protoculture and the lore with that and Grace's specific comments after she hooks herself into the, um, Baja Queen and then it has the flashback scenes from, from scenes of Macro Zero. Those points are, are, are really important. But other than that, it, it's not, you don't have to waste your time with it necessarily. Um, just watch the two movies and, and you'll save yourself a lot of time. Anyway, um, that's my kind of review of the Macross Frontier TV series. Um, I'll have to get around to doing a review of the movies. Um, but I might wait until after I do, um, <clears throat> after I get my DVD for the second Delta movie so I can compile all of that, including the, the, the 20 minutes you know, Kano Yoko music video that they claim is some kind of, you know, short movie, um, into it, so I can have it as, like, one set, um, but, um, but yeah, if you want to watch a Frontier TV series, go ahead, but it, most of the events aren't canon, so just keep that in mind, uh, watch it as kind of, like, just something to watch, and then go watch the movies after that. Maybe it'll give you a different perspective. I don't know. Um, but I would say, like, if you want to get to know the characters a little bit deeper, a little bit better, probably watch the TV series first and then go to the movies. But um, other than that, because once you watch the TV series and watch the movies, and then you know that like, movies are the canon that, uh, that connects to Delta, then you, like... It, it, it takes away some of the, the f you know, interest from the Frontier TV series. So, anyway, um, that's all for this. And I will be reviewing probably something. I don't know if I'll do 7 quite yet because 7 is, is you know, a, a mess. 
of a series. Um, but um, uh, I'm I will get around to seeing what else happens when I have time. So uh, see you in the next video.